Upon the band's return to Oklahoma, the Untouchables experiencing a lapse in full-time booking opportunities, the American Legion, VFW, AM Vets, Elks, and Moose Lodge were available, but all were weekend engagements. Additional efficacious bookings required delving into uncharted quarters. Gary, Jerry, and Glenn paying a visit to Medicine Park named after the Medicine Creek which flows through the center of town. The settlement was established on land purchased by John Elmer Thomas, a future U.S. representative and senator in 1908, who envisioned a resort community to utilize the pure medicinal qualities of Medicine Creek, which were well known by the Plains Indian residents. Thomas naming the constabulary the Medicine Park Summer Resort and Health Spa. The prospective musicians visiting the management of the Medicine Park Hotel, the structure, a defunct cobblestone and wood placard at the entrance to the 60,000-acre Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge. The three-story hotel being completed in 1915. The 50-room hotel featuring a ballroom annex, the focus of social activities in the 1920s and 30s. The nearby wildlife refuge in Lake Latonka attracting thousands of people each weekend and throughout the seasons. Medicine Park having become the playground for the state's rich, famous, and notorious. Outlaws and horse thieves mixed with noted politicians and businessmen, soldiers, and officers from Fort Sill, and the socialites established in the new cobblestone community. The town's colorful history filled with such figures as Will Rogers, Al Capone, Bonnie and Clyde, Pretty Boy Floyd. Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys became entertainment regulars from 1929 through the late 1930s, with numerous other famous bands of the day who made their way through Medicine Park en route to big city venues in Oklahoma City, Dallas, and Fort Worth. Through the years the town and resort blossomed, having upwards of 200,000 visitors annually, but after World War II, the hotel like the rest of Medicine Park, languished and moldered. On a given weekend upwards of over 400 patrons would endow a dollar to enter the hotel portals, dancing and quenching their thirst for music and the amenities. The band's preparation included acquiring printed handbills, distributing them in the commercial parking areas of Lawton and outlying areas to broadcast their upcoming appearance. The Medicine Park location, with its proximity to the wildlife refuge was secluded but still accessible to the local constabulary and the thousands stationed at Fort Sill. The results of their visit, the two making a cover charge percentage agreement, the band providing a weekend musical interlude. The weekend found the cover charge gratuity far exceeding expectations from a large diverse attendant. The nightlife possibilities of Altus was still a viable prospect, the town being representative of most military towns, the band having performed at the non-military affiliated Colony Club, and Gary and Jerry at the Pink Elephant with the Rhythm Tamers. The band approaching the base NCO and officers clubs about bookings, discovering they were contracted months in advance and essentially used on post groups and with the VFW and America Legion remaining mainstay engagements for Friday and Saturday nights. Gary questioned whether it was the VFW club's prominent music, or the club's augmented game room that solicited the crowded weekend customers. Inside the VFW, positioned at the entrance to the club's game room was seated an uniformed deputy in full regalia representing the Jackson County Sheriff Department, inside, lining the walls, the much sought after Las Vegas style slot machines. The musicians were on the road again, the band was traversing to Chattanooga, Oklahoma, 26 miles southwest of Lawton. This small community of 500 was hosting their annual fall barbecue and rodeo. Don Red Eye Kinder, a benefactor of Troy L. Edge, and the disbanded Rhythm Tamers having contacted the untouchables to replace the tamers the band to perform at the late afternoon rodeo and barbecue event 
followed by an evening moonlight dance. The band setting up on a flatbed trailer adjoining the erected rodeo circuit arena, to address the gathered array with several appropriate country songs. Don Kinder presiding as the public address announcer for the rodeo event, beginning with a welcoming announcement to all in attendance, naming the dignitaries responsible for this annual showcase occurrence. It was the final announcement that froze Glenn, Gary, and Jerry. Over the public address system came a proclamation, would you all please stand as the band plays our national anthem. The two musicians looking at each other with a surprised expression, never having been asked to play the national anthem. Gary taking stock of the situation, telling Glenn to play a continuous drum roll. Looking at Jerry, saying, the key of C. Red Eye Don Kinder making a satisfying novice vocal attempt, seeming to have satisfied the country rodeo crowd. The band's Chattanooga Rodeo National Anthem experience, something to be remembered. Glenn was struggling with his home life, and Jerry was seeing more of Frederick, having left the rental house he and Gary had shared. Gary too having wandered, spending more time with Raydell Hennessy, better known as Jackie, the two having reacquainted from meeting over a year ago. Jackie introducing the pianist to her mother and young son from a prior marriage, the relationship having its ups and downs, but without a clear vision of a future, and not speculating. It was inevitable, the band's bookings having become repetitious, innovation was at a standstill. Gary becoming solace in thaw, his world becoming an enclosure. Having vacated the apartment as a necessity, Jackie imposing on her estranged father Ray Carpenter for a place he could stay until other arrangements could be made. Realizing a diversity of circumstances with the apparent paresis of the band, the questionable relationships with Jackie, immobilized without transportation. Gary's meaningful life was in checkmate, both personal and professional. The torpidity of prospect issuing him a summons, return to California.